Ciao, benvenuta. Non so, good to see you. Nice to see you. I'm here in beautiful northern Scottsdale at my friend Nantes restaurant, Casa Mia and CM2 Pizzeria and Bake Shop. He's invited me for a culinary experience to create the tastes of Italy. We'll spend the morning cooking up some fun, making classical Neapolitan dishes from the region of Campania, also known as the Kitchen of Italy. His parents will be stopping by too. Then the rest of the food-loving Italian bunch will join us for dinner. Breaking bread and indulging in our creations is an end to our picture-perfect day. We'll start with ravioli, an authentic Italian dish with made-from-scratch pasta, stuffed with fresh spinach and creamy ricotta, delicately cooked to the ideal al dente. It's a simple and refined bite. Next, it's time for our mouth-watering ragu. Cubes of tender meat fall off the bone. It's cooked low and slow to soak in all the sweetness of our San Marzano tomatoes, paired with sauteed rapini for that fresh color and vibrant flavor. Italian comfort food at its core. This bite is hearty and delicious. And let's finish our day with the most enchanting gluten-free brownie you will ever taste. This is a variation on traditional Neapolitan recipe, fused with the traditional American brownie recipe. The Belgian cocoa is bitter, the coconut oil rich, and the almonds with hazelnuts bring a balanced crunch. Plated on a bed of berries and balsamic. Mmm, mmm, mmm. What a treat. It's an indulgent and chewy bite. Join me as we prepare these beautiful bites. So can I help you add in some meat, Nanta? Yeah, go right ahead. So, okay, you're gonna brown the meat, then you remove it. Then we remove the meat just to give a little bit of room in the pan for the rest of the meat to get brown. We don't okay. want the oil to get too cool, because then you won't have the browning happening as fast. So it's important to always keep the oil in the pan hot. You want to keep it hot because you okay. want to scorch the meat throughout the whole process. If you could smell that, oh my goodness, it smells so delicious. I can imagine that if you were just at home and then people come over for dinner and you're making this dish, just the aroma would fill the entire house. Oh the whole goodness. neighborhood. So what kind of meat is this, Nantes? So we have some pork ribs, some short ribs, and some truck roast. Okay. And then we're gonna cook sausage. Yeah, and if you want, you can add lamb. If you can want, you can add some different types of cuts. Um, but these are the ones that I prefer just because when they cook down, they tend to get really soft. So you wanna save the sausage for last. Because, because the sausage will actually break apart if you have it cooked too early in the sauce. So you just want to sear it in the end and then add it with the sauce towards the end of it. Okay. You want to get all the meat with the bone and make sure you get meat with bone in. You don't want to get boneless ribs because a lot of the flavor does come from the bones next to the meat. We're going to leave a little bit of the meat inside the pan. Okay. And then we're going to add the onions. So if you'd be so kind to pass me the onions. Yes. We're gonna let the onions cook just a little bit, get a little bit of a sear on them. And the meat starts to release a lot of fat um, because the cuts that we use do have a little bit more fat on them. So you're gonna have a little bit more oil in the pan. So just really get that flavor into the onions. That's part of the, the magic of cooking this recipe. But that fat is what releases all that flavor and the bone as well. The bone gives a lot of flavor. Yeah, yeah. Initially we cook at a really high temperature and then for the rest of the cooking process, we're actually going to cook this at a very low temperature so all those flavors can come together slowly, almost like a stew. And you really have the meat starting to fall off the bones after that process. Add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Perfect. And once you see the onions start to get golden like that, you start seeing the edges getting a little bit brown. Yes. Then we're actually going to prepare the vermouth. 
You can use whatever type of wine you like. Um, we prefer to use vermouth. It's more of a traditional recipe. I smell how it smells almost like a dessert. It doesn't smell like it wine. It does smell yeah. like a dessert. Mm. Exactly. Oh my goodness. So while that starts to deglaze, add the rest of the meat into the pan. Once the alcohol starts to cook off, we're gonna start adding the tomato sauce. We really like using San Marzano tomatoes because they have a really nice sweet flavor to them um, and they don't tend to be as acidic as some of the other um, tomatoes that you find here on the market. And can you grab me a little bit of basil? So do you want the whole basil? Uh, yeah, actually. So you want the stem and everything? Just throw it all in. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. I wish that they had the television where you could smell things because this smells so incredible. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And as it continues to cook down, I mean, so you cook this for three to five to six hours. I mean, you really just You really it... want it to cook slow. I would say four hours is plenty of time. But if, if you, you let like... it cook five or six, it's not going to hurt it. It's not going to hurt okay. it, no. And if you would like to add the sausage now, you can drop the sausage in. Okay. So you can use any Italian sausage, but you and your family actually make the sausage. We do. We make our sausage here in-house. The two of you are from Italy. Tell me where, where you come from there and, and why you came to Arizona. We met in Sorrento because my family moved from my hometown in Puglia to, um, because of my father's job, and that's how we met. And then through a friend, we had the opportunity to come here um, to give them more opportunities, <laughs> right? <laughs> For your children, yes. yes. Food is a very important part of the, you know, keeping the family together. We had always, you know, back in Italy, we always had big reunion every Sunday, you know, or you know, during the holidays, we'd be putting food on the table, and there was so much food that you could stay at the table for hours and hours. So you had like breakfast, lunch, and dinner all together. And then never you, you yes. never stop eating. <laughs> never, never. Well, then you have a relatives, you know, all these kids around the, the table uh, making noise and um, the usual things, but beautiful things, I think. Today, fun. yes, today I don't um, find in our, uh, in the new generation, all this kind of importance of the to set the table together, talk uh, together about different kind of. Uh, problems and things. Now everybody comes and the first thing to happen is like this. On the farm, have six people, eight people, everybody. Really? And there's no any more kind of uh, uh, true communication. Communication, yeah, connection, family. Connect. You have the grandparents, the children, yeah. everyone, and you talk. Sometimes yes. I see people here at the restaurant coming, you know, mm -hmm. father, mother, couple kids, everybody say with the iPod or the iPhone, the testing, the doing things. and. They don't even talk to each other anymore. That's a very sad. And that's sad. It is, it is. Because that's one of the beautiful things about food is it brings people yes. together. Yes. For us, any excuse to sit and whether it's a soccer game, whatever, we sit around a table and we try to have food together. And break bread. Because it's yeah. more than about eating. Absolutely. It's about love. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Because you put, you mentioned it's a passion and everything. It you is. put love into your food. It is, it is, it is. It's like, you know, it takes time to make good food. It takes time to teach the to talk kids. about things and to have you know some kind of discussions and fights and it all comes to the table. You yes. know, it's, yes. it's part life. of life <laughs> for us. Thank you so much for welcoming me today into your beautiful restaurant and Thank you. and into your fam and coming into your family here and cooking with you and breaking bread with you. And tonight we have a wonderful dinner that we're going to be sharing with some of your family friends. Yes. Sure. So thank you so much. But I suppose here we are. Thank what would be your salute in Italian? Salute. Yeah, yeah. Salute. 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 So now we are going to make your delicious gluten-free brownies. These are incredible. Oh my goodness. I might have had them before. Anyways, they are dairy-free and they're gluten-free. So tell me a little bit about these yummy brownies. So we went ahead and melted the coconut oil in the bowl already. And we're going to start by incorporating some of the raw ingredients. So okay. if you want to start adding a little bit of the brown sugar. Absolutely. Should we turn the mixer on? We can. Perfect. 
That's beautiful. We'll go ahead and add the sugar. And be careful when you add the cocoa the powder because it will get everywhere. And this is a Belgian cocoa. It's mm. about an 85 to 90 percent Belgian cocoa. We prefer Belgian cocoa over Dutch just because of the flavor that we get from Belgian cocoa. So be careful when you add that because it will go get everywhere. everywhere. It will get everywhere. <laughs> I'm getting it everywhere. <laughs> There's chocolate everywhere. So then we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. Okay. Mm, if you could smell this, that, oh, it's just that chocolate. It's that delicious, rich chocolate. It's the bitterness of that chocolate that makes these so incredible because they're not overly sweet, but they're rich. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of sugar going into this recipe, so to balance that type of recipe, like a lot of Italian cooking, you like a balance in flavors. You don't want anything to be overpowering. So these are six whole eggs that go into this recipe. You could use an egg substitute instead of the eggs, but we had to have a little bit of guilt in this dish. It couldn't be free of everything. Absolutely not. So you can go ahead and turn the speed up a little bit more. And if you want to turn it off first, and we'll scrape the sides yep. of the bowl a little bit. Want to make sure to get all that goodness inside of there mixed in. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. So turn it up now? Yeah, go ahead and just turn it up to a little bit of a higher speed. Okay. So we're gonna add a little bit of almond flour, go you ahead. You can go ahead. I think you do it less messy than I do. The okay. thing with almond flour is it's a little bit more moist than regular flour. So you have to be, kind of have to eyeball it when you make recipes that require your batter to be a little more on the dry side because the almond flour does tend to be a little more moist. Okay. So. And once that starts to incorporate, we'll again scrape the sides of the bowl. Okay. <laughs> so once all those dry ingredients really start to come together, you see how it's made a little bit of a paste? Mm -hmm. Then we start adding our eggs. And the eggs are gonna be our binder in this recipe, so you'll actually hear the mixture start to slow down as it becomes a little more on the dense side. So about how long do you wanna let that? As soon as all the eggs have mixed in, okay. give it a nice little scrape around the sides one more time just to make sure that you're getting all the dry ingredients. Wow, that smells amazing. That does smell amazing. Oh my goodness. So these are coarsely chopped up hazelnuts and almonds. You want to have them in a little bit larger chunks is what we prefer, just to give a little more texture to the brownie. So mm -hmm. you have some crunchiness in there as well. The almonds are raw and the hazelnuts are raw as well because in the oven they'll end up getting roasted anyway and they release a lot of the flavor into the brownie. So that's something I learned through trial and error. There was really no recipe for that one. Yeah, so I'll run the whisk on high just so everything comes off of the whisk so all the batter that you can release. Any. So have at it. gosh that is so delicious oh my goodness it's pretty amazing mm. nantas we have a greased pan you greased it with coconut oil to keep the flavor profile the same yeah yeah i went ahead and greased it by hand if you have a spray um, can of oil you can use any kind of oil we prefer to use coconut oil because the chocolate does tend to get a little bit on the sticky side we're going to ease this into the pan this batter is a little different than your regular brownie batter it's a lot more dense and then go ahead and just spread this batter as best as you can. And this is for me. <laughs> we're gonna bake it at 325 for 30 minutes. Okay. And then we're gonna let it sit and cool off at room temperature. Perfect. Yeah. Join the conversation and follow us on all social media platforms. Making one of my recipes at home? Snap a photo and post it with hashtag It's a Beautiful Bite. Going on your own food venture? Take photos and post them with hashtag Food Ventures. Have your own Jesus moment to share? Share it with hashtag Jesus Moment.
Visit us at itsabeautifulbite.com for recipes from this episode and so much more. So Nantes, we've made our brownies. We're getting so much closer to our yummy dinner tonight, but now we have to make the stuffing for the, the ravioli. ravioli. Yes. We're gonna start by wilting our fresh spinach. So I have a little bit of hot water here. It's just below boiling. And we're gonna do is submerge the spinach in there. And that'll allow the spinach to retain some of their flavor. You don't want it to cook it because then it'll lose all of its nutritional value. Okay. And you'll actually notice the color change immediately in the spinach as it starts to wilt. So once the spinach has wilted slightly, we're gonna put it in cold water. We're gonna try to get as much of the water as we can out of it. And the best way to do this, I found, was to do it the old school way. So you just take some cheesecloth and you wanna fold the spinach inside the cheesecloth. And then we're gonna take our bowl and we're gonna twist the top of our cheesecloth, and you can see how much water is still coming out of yes. the spinach. So you want to put as much out as you can. So we're going to take a food processor. So I'm going to put the spinach in. I'll put the ricotta. So then this is our shaped pecorino cheese. So we're going to blend all these ingredients. because I know your way around the kitchen. Go ahead and... Mmm, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And just spoon that into that. Cooking is an art form in the end, so... And it's an expression it has, of love. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. how you do what you do is entirely up to you. Now that we have this delicious filly made, we can go ahead and Start making our pasta. We have to yes. start making a couple of sheets so that we can use this filling. So this is the dough the that dough. we prepared. We want to have it rest about 15, 20 minutes, like I said earlier. Okay. So once it's rested, we're going to run it through our pasta machine. You want to have it at its largest setting initially. And check this out. We're going to feed it through there. Okay. So every time we go through here, we want to decrease the diameter of our sheet so the sheet gets thinner and thinner every time. So you'll start to see a uniform color of the dough. See how now it still has some spots in it? Mm -hmm. So those spots will actually start going away once you get a little bit more uniform structure okay. to the pasta. I know you like stationary paper and stuff like that, so yes. feel that. You can actually feel that texture. It's, it's really It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's soft. It's like... It's, it's not like a velvet. sticky, it's yeah. like velvet. It's beautiful. Every time we fold it, we're actually decreasing the width of the rollers in here. So it's oh, making the pasta okay. thinner and thinner. We start from a really uh, thick gauge, and we go to a thinner gauge as we progress through it every time. Just like that. That's it. That is beautiful. So this is ready now to This fill. is ready to be filled. You want a cutter, and the same cutter that you're going to use to make your pasta, you're gonna use the back side of the cutter to kind of score the pasta so we can get an idea of where to put our filling. So keep them kind of close. There we go, not as hard, there we go. Awesome. After you've done that, after you score the pasta, I want you to draw and cut a line as close, as close to the circle as possible because we're gonna to try to save as much as this side as possible. So that's gonna be the side that we fold over onto the pasta. Wonderful, ah, wonderful, wonderful <laughs> job. I didn't cut through the circles. <laughs> now we're gonna take a little bit of the spinach filling that we made earlier, done with okay. a little bit of ricotta and fresh spinach. Yes. And we're gonna put about a tablespoon in here. So then we're gonna take a little bit of water to introduce moisture again to the dough, and this is gonna act like a glue. So grab that side, we're gonna fold it over like a bed sheet, turn it over. Now we're gonna lay it on top of our noodles that we just did here, the fillings that we just did. 
there we go. You're gonna easily push this down just to kind of outline. Seal it then. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna outline where the filling is. Okay. Just like that. Make sure you're centered around your filling. You push down and you twist around a little bit. Voila! And we have a ravioli. <laughs> Beautiful. How would you say that in Italian? Bellissimo. Bellissimo. If you happen to get too close to the edge, you actually want to use this right here and you want to pull away from the center as you're sealing it. I could see how this could be a wonderful like Sunday family tradition, the whole family together rolling well, that's and making the, it. You know, that's the cool thing about our culture is, yes, it's focused very much around food, but a lot of times, you know, you'll go to old kitchens of families in Italy and you'll notice like grandmothers and great aunts and all these older women sitting around and doing this and they're faster than some machines. They can actually crank these things out like it's going out of style. <laughs> Since we have such a big, fun dinner party coming tonight. We need to make a lot of pasta. We need to make a lot of pasta. So I think that we need to roll all this back through, make a few more batches, and then we get to cook everything. And we actually think we need to get ready to set the table. Let's get going. It'll be a lot of fun. I think so. Let's see, it'll be wonderful. Jesus reclined around the table with his friends when a woman came, carrying with her an alabaster box. She broke it and poured the fragrance over Jesus. The perfume was very costly, but the woman gave it away. As much as she valued her most prized possession, she valued Jesus more. Pouring the perfume over him was an extravagant gesture of gratitude. Some said it was a waste. Why give this much to Jesus when there were other important needs? People might tell you the same. They consider your gestures of gratitude unnecessary, careless, or just so extra. But Jesus said her gift was worth it because only a couple days later, he would go to the cross. Her gift was part of God's plan and it showed the greatest honor to a God who would give it all up for her. This shows me that I can give people my best. I can take extra time to prepare the places and spaces where they will savor my food and enjoy their life. It's not a waste, it's not carelessness. What I have to give in my heart matters to Jesus. It may be costly, but he sees it as beautiful. I'll be recalling that as we welcome our guests this evening. Ragazzi, buon appetito, mangiate. Enjoy. Mangiamo. That was delicious. I can't wait. What's next? Thank you. So next we're going to have the ragu that the sauce came from, which is just stewed meat with a little side of broccoli rabe or rapini. Who is ready for desserts? Nantes' brownies are... Dark chocolate. Are, mm. Dark chocolate. Mm. Yes. It was so wonderful to share the day with you in your beautiful restaurant and what exceptional food. So thank you so much. <laughs>
Don't throw. Sorry. <laughs> I know, but it's, it's popping. I'm working with the maniac. <laughs> Italian and Mediterranean dishes so delicious is the simplicity of it. Exactly. Like a beautiful woman doesn't need to wear that much makeup. Download the app smell vision to get a whiff. <laughs> he was doing so good. The medicine's wearing off. Yeah. How long have the two of you been married? 35 years. 30 Too long. Years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, What's the secret? The secret, keep it always interesting. Ooh, I'm yeah. gonna leave. Yes. Um, you know. No longer letting you do that because you made a mess. She's actually doing this. I'm just, I'm, I'm just <laughs> off for you later. <laughs> Who doesn't want cheese? I don't. Well, you're not supposed to say that, on Oh, you. I'm sorry. You're Italian. <laughs> yeah, my dad will never forgive me for that <laughs> one. When you're making pasta, it's kind of like making metal. You want to fold the metal over and over again. I'm sure many of our viewers can relate to making metal. Yeah. More than making pasta. Yeah, if you're watching this throughout the Middle Ages, this is a really good way <laughs> to craft swords. Look at this. It's not happening. We're gonna keep Have doing you ever it. got your finger stuck in there? Uh, no, I had my tongue stuck in there once as a kid. I was a very curious child. <laughs>